Hello, I'm Christine Winnick Mum and I'm going to help you knit a pair of socks. What you'll need to do if you haven't already is download a copy of the free Sock Along Basic 4 Ply Sock Pattern, which you'll find here on the Winnick Mum blog. That's at winnickmum.co.uk and that's also where you'll find the tutorials that go along with this video series. You can also have a paperback or ebook version of the tutorials if you'd rather have that than look at them online. Are you ready to get started? This video is all about matching yarn. If you're following along with the online sock along tutorials, you need the getting started accessories and matching yarn tutorial. And if you're going to be using the Super Socks book, you need page 21. If you're specifically looking for help on how to match the Winnick Mum yarns, you'll find that tutorial on the blog in the Winnick Mum yarn section. And the short link directly to the tutorial is on the screen now. Okay, here's the yarn that I'm going to use. It's a 100 gram ball of sock yarn, which means that it contains nylon to make it more hard wearing. And unless you've got very big feet, you should get one pair of socks from a 100 gram ball. This is how the socks look once they've been knitted up. You can see that there are stripes and there is a definite repeat, so it is possible to get a matching pair. With this yarn, despite the stripes not being regular, it's quite easy to see how the repeat works. However, when you look at the ball, it's not quite so obvious where the stripes are or how they're going to match. If you look at this pair of socks, you can see that there are very definite stripes in regular repeats, which means that you can actually match straight from the ball. And you can see when you look at the ball where the stripes are. With regular stripes, it's easy just to start your second sock at the point where you started your first sock. So I'm going to look at how to match this type of yarn where it's not so obvious. I always knit from the inside of the ball as it stops it rolling about. So I'm going to start by pulling the outside end out of where it's been tucked in by the manufacturer, giving the ball a bit of a squish to separate the yarn inside and then putting my fingers into the middle of the ball and pulling a chunk out. You're looking to divide the ball into two. So you want two balls of roughly 50 grams to start with and you can always weigh it if you think that you're going to need to. So now we've got our two balls of yarn. This one on the right, we'll call it the inside ball. And this one on the left, we'll call that the outside ball with the yarn coming out of it there. And what we need to do is find the end of the ball of the yarn on this inside right ball, first of all. Now, sometimes it takes a bit of fiddling and wiggling to find it, but it is in there. So if you just take your time, then you'll be able to, to pull it out. Once you've found the end, the next thing to do is find the second colour change in the yarn. And that's because you don't know where the first colour was cut in the mill, so you don't know how long it is. I've got red and black sections here, so I'm going to keep pulling until I get to the next colour. Let's keep going, keep going, keep going. Ah, there it is, there it is. I've got a solid red now, and that should make it quite easy to find a match with the other ball. So that's what I'm going to be looking for in the, the second ball when I get to it. I'll just pull a bit more out. There we go, so that I know what I've got to work with. Right, now I'm going to use this section of the yarn to show you how it works. So you can see there's the red and the black. Oh, there's my section of, of red colour. I'll just pull that over to the right out of the way. Now you can see the red and the black, and that's the same as the first section that I pulled up. And we know that there's a red section after that, so that's what I'll be looking for. So I'm going to lay the first yarn out in the direction that I want it to go. As I'm right-handed, I'm going to be pulling it from left to right. That's the direction of the yarn there. Now I'm going to want the second yarn to be the same so that it pulls from the ball in the same direction. So I'm also pulling from left to right. And that's going to make sure that my stripes are going to match and also the yarn is coming out of the ball in the same direction for both yarns. What I'm doing now is matching the two red and black sections together and I'm going to follow it along so that I know that these sections match. Now that takes me back along to the end of the inside ball and you can see that that's why we don't start with the first colour because as you look at it then you'll see that one of the yarns is shorter. There it is, that's where the yarn was cut in the mill, but you can see that the other one continues. So I'm gonna go back along again. There we go, there's the solid red 
again and I can see that that matches and you can see that the yarn is pulling from the inside of the inside ball and it's also pulling from the inside of the outside ball so that they're going in the same direction. Now I'm going to show you how to make absolutely sure you've got them both to match. I'm just laying out the yarns here so that you can see them together. There's the red, it's all together in loops. Here we go, there's the red and black together. Now if we put these to these ones and we still keep pulling from the ball, they're both pulling in the same directions and any minute now you'll see that the colour changes, there they go, and they're absolutely at the same point. So that's how you know that your yarn is going to match when you come to knit your socks. So next what you need to decide is where you're going to start knitting from and you can work your way back to the point where the match with the end of the yarn was if you wanted to. Um, what I prefer to do is start from the second colour. That's, that's just, just my preference. Obviously it depends on how much yarn is going to be wasted but that's generally what I tend to do. And the next thing I do is I make a slip knot in the yarn and I put a safety pin in the loop. And that makes sure that I won't lose the point where I've matched the two yarns together. So I do that with both of them. That's the first one done. Here's the second one. It's just the same kind of, of, of slip knot that you'd make to start off when you, you need to do your cast on for the knitting. And now that I've done that, then I've got my point where both the yarns are going to match. So it doesn't matter which one I use first, that I'm not going to lose that point on either of them. So there you've got your yarn all ready to go for a matching pair of socks. You need to cut the yarn on the right hand side, so that's on the right of where you can see the safety pins there, but be sure you're absolutely happy with the match before you do. And now we're going to wind the yarn into centre pull balls. This is an easy way to wind your matched yarn into usable balls, and it also means that it won't get into a tangle after you've pulled your original ball of yarn apart. Start by laying the end of the yarn across the palm of your hand and anchoring it with your ring and little fingers and then start to wrap the yarn in a figure of eight movement around your thumb and forefinger for maybe 10 or 12 wraps. It doesn't really matter as long as you've got a decent amount to get hold of as you'll see in a minute. It also doesn't matter whether you do this right or left handed but as I'm right handed that's what I'm showing you. Slide the yarn off your thumb and forefinger and squish it tight between them, then continue to wrap around your thumb and forefinger, making sure that you change direction every now and again so that you're not just wrapping over and over in one place. You need to keep going for a reasonable amount of time so that you start to create a small ball around your fingers. I know this doesn't look much like a ball at the moment, but it will do soon. And once it's a decent size, then slide your forefinger out Make sure that you took the non-working end of the yarn away so that you don't wind it in by mistake and then just keep winding. So don't forget that you'll need to keep changing direction to create the ball shape. This still doesn't look much like a ball but it will do I promise if you just keep going and sometimes you might need to use your forefinger to tuck the ends in so that you can carry on keeping it as a ball shape. It's up to you whether you leave your thumb in as you keep winding or whether you take it out. It really doesn't matter, you might find it easier, but just make sure that if you do take your thumb out, then you don't wind over where you're going to be pulling the yarn from. For that reason, I find it easier to leave my thumb in. But you'll very soon be able to see that you've got a small ball. You can see where the yarn's pulling out of the centre. And as you keep going, then you just use up the rest of the yarn.